Sweets are an integral part of any festival. When it comes to Christmas, it's absolutely synonymous with a cake. Well, this is the Bombay Chef Varun Namdar and today, let's see a Christmas special plum cake. For this recipe today, I'm following a classic pound cake recipe. A pound cake has your butter, sugar, flour and eggs of the same proportion. First things first, soft butter goes in a large bowl. To this, I'm adding in sifted powdered sugar and this mixture needs to be nicely creamed. Once this mixture starts getting shiny, I'll start adding in an egg at a time. Make sure after each addition, you cream this mixture well. Simultaneously, while beating the batter, make sure you're also turning the bowl around. Similarly, I'll add in all the eggs and beat this batter to a nice, smooth mixture. Your batter is halfway ready. Let's now move to the dry ingredients. For this, I need to take some refined flour. With this, some baking soda. Sieve these two ingredients together nicely. I'm next moving on to the soaked fruits. Well, I have some raisins here with me, which I've soaked in orange juice. I'm sieving all the liquid from the raisins and the black sultanas. This needs to be soaked at least overnight. I'm draining the liquid from both the fruits. And this now goes in the flour mix. Well, one of those major faults in the bakery world is when you make a cake, the fruits sit at the bottom. To avoid that, what we need to do is run these fruits into the mixture of flour and baking powder. So they get nicely dispersed through the entire cake. Give this a nice toss. And with this, I'm also adding in another secret ingredient, which is candied peel. This peel is the peel of either sweet lime or oranges. This peel is candied in sugar syrup and dried under the sun. And next are some dried seedless plums, which are also known as prunes. The fruits are nicely coated with the flour. So this now goes straight in the wet mixture. Make sure we mix this batter nicely. To this batter, I'll also add in the reserved fruit juice, which I'd used as a soaking liquor. To add into the charm of Christmas celebrations, the most important ingredient to this is the spice mix. So let's begin with that. For this, in a grinder, I'm adding in some fennel seeds, star anise, black peppercorns, cloves, black cardamom, some green cardamom, cinnamon sticks, some nutmeg for its nice earthy flavor, and finally, some blades of mace. Let's grind this into a fine and smooth powder. A tablespoon and a half of this spice mix goes into this batter and now let's mix this nicely for the last time. Well here I have a ring mold which I've lined with aluminium foil. Alternately you can also use any mold of your choice. To this I'm applying a little bit of oil and this step technically is called greasing the mold. After oil, the next ingredient that I'm dredging is refined flour. Because this would help in sliding the cake out after baking. I'm turning this ring around on all sides to make sure the flour is nicely dusted. And finally, I'm going to dab this out to remove the excess flour. I'm going to transfer this batter. With the back of a spoon, just even the entire top surface of the cake batter. This now goes in a preheated oven for 40 to 45 minutes. While the cake is getting baked, let's start making royal icing. Royal icing is a mixture of egg whites, icing sugar and lemon juice. So first that goes in the bowl are egg whites. I'm going to start whisking this till it gets lightly foamy. Once this turns nice and foamy, 
I'll slowly start adding in the icing sugar. At this stage, I'll be introducing lemon juice. Because of the acid in lemon juice, the royal icing is going to turn snowy white. Let's continue the steps of whisking and introducing sugar simultaneously. The royal icing is nicely whipped and ready. Let's keep this covered under a damp cloth till it's ready to use. The next step is making the holly leaves and the berries. For that, I have some colored fondant here with me. Well, fondant is something which is made with icing sugar, glucose and golden syrup. The recipe, the detailed recipe rather, is there in the description box below. So let's begin with making the leaves. I'm going to roll this into a very thin disc. It should be roughly a 1mm thick disc. With the help of a leaf cutter, I'm just going to cut some leaves. Like so. Just dab a little bit of corn flour and continue cutting the leaves. Similarly, let's start making some more cutouts of the holly leaves. These leaves next go on this piece of sponge and the sides or the edges need to be evened out. By doing this, the edges of the leaves get nicely curled and make them look as natural as original. After the holly leaves, let's move to the red fondant to make some berries. I'm going to roll this into a long cylinder and cut these at irregular intervals because berries could be of irregular sizes. Let's roll these up into tiny little balls. Throw in a little bit of corn flour and rest these till further use. The cake is baked and ready. Let's move it out of the oven. Allow this to rest till it has completely cooled down. The cake has cooled down completely. Let's start unmolding it. I'm going to run a sharp knife around the cake. Carefully remove the aluminium foil. Let's start frosting the cake with royal icing, holly leaves and berries. I'm going to give this a quick mix and pick spoonfuls and drop it on the cake. Make sure with the help of a bent knife or a regular pallet knife, you frost the cake nicely and evenly. This could be as rough as possible. With the help of this pallet knife, I'm just going to press the royal icing a little and make sure this rises into soft peaks. Next that goes on top of royal icing are some holly leaves. Finally, I'm going to take a little bit of water and just dab my palm. And on this, I'm going to place and roll a few of these berries. This is done for two purposes. One is to make it shine and second is to create like an instant glue. Finally, I have re-kneaded a little bit of the fondant and I'm rolling this into a thin long strip. Keep dabbing with a little bit of corn flour to make sure this does not stick and keep rolling it long and thin. I'm going to place this aside and start rolling the red fondant similarly. I'm going to press this at one of the sides and start intertwining these by twisting it around. Rich, fruity, sweet with a touch of spice. 
That's all I can think of when it comes to a good Christmas plum cake. Well, enjoy this with your family and friends and here's wishing all of you across the globe Merry Christmas. Hi guys, welcome to Get Curried. This is the Bombay chef Varun Namdar and today I'm going to show you a very classic recipe which is a bread pudding. But this one, mind you, is a little bit of a twist to the classic. Let's get going. First things first, let's make a butter and jam sandwich. For that, a generous smear of some butter. And I'm going to sandwich this with a bread slice which has jam smeared on this. The jam could be of strawberry, raspberries, apricots or even mixed fruit for that matter. Well, if like mangoes, well that also tastes very well. So this goes right on top. Similarly, start smearing the jam on the other slices of bread. The next step is to assemble these together and cut these into cubes. The jam sandwiches are cut and ready. Now these go straight in the baking dish. Let's move on to the next step, which is heating the milk. On moderate flame, just make sure this starts boiling a little. Let's heat this on moderate flame. Once the milk warms up a little, in goes the sugar. And just mix it lightly till the sugar dissolves completely. Whilst the sugar is getting dissolved, Let's begin with whisking the eggs. Whisk this very lightly. Just make sure the yolk and the egg white just combines together. As soon as this is done, off goes the flame and this hot milk with the sugar dissolved in it goes straight into this. Whisk it nicely till this entire mixture comes together. One very important step here is never add in the whisked eggs to the hot milk. Otherwise the eggs may just turn up scrambled. While this is happening, I'll be adding in some vanilla essence along with some cinnamon powder. A quick mix and the pudding mixture is ready. The pudding mix now goes on top of the jam and butter sandwich. Just try to pour this mixture in such a way that all the jam and butter sandwich pieces get submerged or at least get a dab of this liquid. With a spoon or a fork, just try to push in the pieces of bread lightly and make sure this milk or pudding mixture gets nicely absorbed. Just make sure the sides of this baking dish are nicely wiped and there should be no traces of either milk or sugar because if that burns, it may just end up looking very dirty. Finally, before popping this in the oven, I'm just going to add in some golden raisins. Well, this now goes in a preheated oven at 200 degrees for 20 minutes. But before that, what is the twist to this classic? The twist is in the traditional recipe, we used to add in dollops of jam smeared here and there. But in this, I've instead made a jam sandwich. So let's make this now. Well, it's been 20 minutes now and this is perfectly baked. It's risen nicely and well. Now, let's drizzle some icing sugar.
So here is your sweet, luscious and fruity family treat which is a bread and butter pudding. Do try this at home and do let us know how you like it. And wait for what next the Bombay chef gets into your kitchen. Hello my lords, ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Nick Shroff's Food Log. Today we're going to tickle that sweet tooth and make a delectable chocolate cheesecake. So for making the chocolate cheesecake, we first have to make the biscuit base. I have here with me 400 grams of homemade chocolate biscuit. You can use any biscuit you want or you can actually Google how to make a homemade chocolate biscuit and make it on your own. The choice is yours, but please make your own biscuit. Now let's crush this biscuit. Once the biscuit is nice and fine, wait, I'll bit a few lumps. We add in a hundred grams of melted butter and mix everything together. We then pour this into a spring foam pan and flatten it out to form a base. Once this is done, we leave this in the fridge to chill till we use it again. And now to make the filling for the chocolate cheesecake, we have 230 grams of dark chocolate, which we will melt over a water bath in a heat-proof glass bowl. When the chocolate has melted completely, we take it off the heat and wait for it to cool down just a bit before we add things to it. To this melted chocolate, we're going to add 460 grams of cream cheese and we whisk this together now we add in 220 grams of brown sugar you can also add caster sugar if you wish or icing sugar Followed by 10 grams of cocoa powder. And finally, two tablespoons of milk. The milk gives it a good shine and texture. Now we pour the mixture onto the cake tin where we've already set our base. And spread the mixture evenly to form a smooth surface. Now we tap this to make sure there are no air bubbles and because I like tapping things and we put this in the fridge to set. Off we go. Now let's whip some cream to stiff peaks till the cake's setting in the fridge. I'm going to add some icing sugar to this, but that's optional. Stiff big whipped cream. Now I'm going to transfer this into a piping bag made of my favorite thing in the world, silicone. That's only for baking, by the way, and phone covers. Cake has set, and now it's time to get it out of the mold. So,
Now let's dust that with some cocoa powder. And make some nice rosettes of the whipped cream. So there you have it, a delectable chocolate cheesecake to indulge your sweet tooth in. Enjoy! Today we're going to make cute little mini Nutella pancakes in this Pani Aram or Ebel Skiva pan. They're going to be stuffed with Nutella and then to make them even more indulgent, we'll drizzle more Nutella on them. So let's get started. We're going to start with getting some buttermilk for this recipe but you know pretty much like you I never have any buttermilk lying at home so we'll just take three-fourths of a cup of milk and add a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar you can use lemon juice as well and we'll just give that a stir and just set it aside and let it do its thing which is basically let it curdle So while that milk curdles, I'm going to move on to the dry ingredients. I've got a cup of all-purpose flour here, maida, that's 120 grams. And I'm going to start with adding just a tiny pinch of salt, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder. And then you want to add some baking soda. That's going to give this a lot of lightness and airiness and it's also going to react with that buttermilk that we've got curdling there. The next thing you want to add is some sugar. Now that's caster sugar that I've added to this pancake mix here but you can use any kind of sugar. You can use raw sugar. Sometimes I've, I've even added gurchakar and that's really great too. Just give that a light little whisk. So let's check on that buttermilk. Ooh, looks good. Now to this buttermilk, I'm first going to crack an egg into this. This is a large egg. A teaspoon of really good vanilla extract. And now to this, I'm going to add a tablespoon of oil. This is a flavorless oil. So avoid extra virgin olive oil or anything because you know that leaves a little bit of an aftertaste in whatever you're making. Sunflower oil, safflower oil, they're all good. Now just mix this up really well. Okay, the wet ingredients look really good. And now I'm going to add them to the dry ingredients. As much as is possible, just make a slight well in the center. Now there's nothing scientific about this. It just helps everything mix well together. And pour all of the wet ingredients in. Okay, now you just want to mix this together. Just remember to gently mix it. Don't be too vigorous. You want to make sure that there are no white flowery bits left. But tiny little lumps are absolutely fine because they fluff up when we cook this batter. The batter is looking really gorgeous, but we need to let this rest for 10 minutes. You really don't need any special equipment for this recipe, but what really helps is to have a piping bag with a nozzle. Use any thin nozzle and just add the Nutella to this piping bag because it makes it much easier to handle. So that's a good amount of Nutella that's going to go inside the pancakes and we also drizzle them on the pancakes. Just twist this nozzle because we're going to let this rest while the pancake batter also rests and we need to preheat the panyaram pan as well. The pan is nice and warm and I'm just going to brush it with some melted butter now. I've tried making this recipe with brushing the pan with oil but let's just face it, butter is better. Fill each of these just about halfway through with the batter. Now this is where you're really going to thank me for using this piping bag because we're going to pipe the Nutella right into the pancake. Now 
Now you want to cover up the Nutella with the batter. Very important to cover it up completely. Otherwise, it will just burn. When you see these bubbles starting to form, that's when you want to gently flip each of the pancakes. Look at that beautiful, beautiful golden color. Pancakes are almost done and I say almost because we need the final garnish which makes all the difference to this recipe. I'm going to dust it with some icing sugar. And give it that final drizzle of Nutella. Be generous. These tiny little Nutella pancakes are so cute. I can just keep eating them all day. I'm going to finish this entire plate now. But before I go off, I must tell you to like, share and subscribe to Get Curried and come back here for more such interesting recipes. Today we're making an all-time favorite dessert the gooey dark chocolate brownie with caramel sauce. So for making gooey dark chocolate brownies, we have with us 200 grams of butter and 200 grams of dark chocolate. Now I'm going to mix this together and I shall keep this bowl on a bain-marie or water bath as it is commonly known. And now we wait for this to melt completely, stirring occasionally. Once all the chocolate and butter has melted, we take it off the heat and put the bowl on a piece of cloth, you know, because it's wet. So you don't want to get the counter all wet and greasy. And now we add in four eggs, one egg at a time. Let's start with egg one. Now goes in a tablespoon of vanilla essence and we whisk. Now we add in about 360 grams of light brown sugar. Alternatively, you can also add caster sugar, that's white sugar if you wish, but I like light brown sugar in my brownie. Whisk the sugar in. Now we sieve in about 260 grams all-purpose flour. Followed by a teaspoon of baking powder and a teaspoon of salt. Now we whisk everything together. And now I'm going to pour this mixture in a chilled butter pan. We tap this on the surface to get rid of any air bubbles. Bun. And now we keep this in the fridge to chill for about 20 minutes. Now that this is chilled, it goes in the oven for 40 minutes at 160 degrees. As our brownie is cooking, we make the caramel sauce. To make caramel sauce, we pour sugar in a pan on a high flame. We spread it out and wait for it to melt. This can also be done with white caster sugar. 
reduce the flame as it melts. At a safe distance, pour in cream. Immediately, mix the caramel and cream together. When it all comes together, we take it off the heat and mix in a little bit of butter. And to stop the sugar from cooking any further in the hot pan, we pour it into a container. And the caramel sauce is done. The brownie is done. Now we leave it to cool for 10 minutes before we cut it into pieces. So there you have it, gooey dark chocolate brownies with a salted caramel sauce. Enjoy!